Hi, my name is Randy Russ, the president of Apps Industries. Now, the video you're about to watch is a product profile of the i220 TS4 scraper. It's a 22 cubic yard heat rated scraper, a four tire rear carriage system that's designed for today's tractors as well as the tractors of the future. So what we're gonna do is break this machine down into four sections. We'll have basically the front section, which is the connecting point of the scraper into the tractor. Talk about the importance of the mainframe pipe and the trailing arms as well as the pole. The next section we'll be talking about the apron, the ability to close that material off, carry it to your second site, unload it, but also more importantly, how do you use it when you're loading a scraper? Next section would be the blades, which consists of the bowl floor, the sidewalls, as well as a rear tire configuration, and lastly, ejection system. So with that in mind, let's get started. The front section consists of four specific areas. You can have a trailing arm that connects the scraper to the bowl, front section pipe, pull, the hitch, but also by more importantly, what's into the tractor. So when you get into these kind of weights that we're placing onto these tractors, we have to move that connecting point very close into the machine. And we do that with the swivel hitch system here. But what basically, let me tell you a bit about the drawbar that's in the tractor, on the scraper version tractors. See, the last round of bankruptcies, Reynolds basically had to let go of the supply chain uh, component to CNA. Fargo plant to build the draw bars for them. So we were able to pick up that program and basically building this draw bars for the CNH plant in Fargo. What we basically we wanted to take a look at, we were really concerned about the negative weight transfers that can be placed on the hitch pin. And now for those of you familiar with the Ronald Reynolds quick hitch, it had a kind of a sliding tab lug that kind of swung through the ear system and a small pin to kind of hold it in place. Well again now those types of hitches were really designed for rear carriage design. So what you found is that the hitch pin really always had a positive weight downward. And simply by raising the lower rear tires, you're controlling the depth of cut by moving the rear tires. Now, now what you're seeing in the market today is a lot more companies, including us and John Deere and several other companies, that are front load designs. So we're raising the blade at the front. So you can actually put negative weight transfers on the pitch pin. So what we were finding on some of those Reynolds quick hitches with that little swinging tab, we were breaking the pins and let the machine come actually separated because we could actually raise the back end of the tractor up, whereas that pin design was really designed for the something that had the carriage moving up and down. So we have a very positive connection of a slide drawer lug that connects into the draw bar. So it's much more stout on those sets of situations where you got a negative and positive weight transfers onto the tractor draw bar. Now the front section, basically you can see we have nine one inch bolts securing this hitch into the pole of the front section. Now this hitch basically is something that we buy from Icon Industries. It's a very stout hitch, uh, very robust, but it's built to our standards at the ear system here. Because what we are, basically we still adopt the Reynolds specification. So the draw bars are going onto uh, these tractors. We are basically utilizing at six and a half inch between the ears, 10 inches on the outside of the ears. So when you get customers basically say, hey, I got a scraper draw bar, make sure you have them confirm that the ear spacing between the ears as well as the outside of the ears is basically close to what we have. The hitch pin that we have here, the horizontal hitch pin, that's where a lot of that thrust load basically from pulling, but probably more importantly, that static vertical weight of the scraper fully loaded is transitioned here. So our thought is to have as big a pin as possible. So a six inch swivel shaft, that rotates 360 degrees around so you don't have any limited range of motion like a yoke hitch. Then we need turning radius, especially for these quads, but probably more importantly for those duals, we need to come back and have a vertical pin to give us the ability to articulate that machine back and forth without having that duals get into the tractor. Now the pole basically is the connecting point from the hitch to the front section pipe. Now we try to make that distance as long as possible, yet not making a crazy train length as far as if you put way too much length onto it. So we found that this pole length is 10 foot from the front section pipe to that hitch pin. Not only gives you good ability to let the head tracker have turning radius, get tires into here, but also controls and keeps our weight within the limits the case allows us to put onto these tractors. But probably more importantly, as you can kind of see, the pole kind of comes up at an angle grabs the front section pipe and the trailing arms come down. The things that we're trying to do with that is give you good visibility from the tractor seat into that blade system. So when you get into a cut, you pull up a rock or maybe you got a survey stake that you gotta get an elevation base to set your GPS receiver from. You got the ability to see that. See a lot of the competition running their front section pipes much lower to the ground. So you really don't have the visibility. All you're really seeing from the tractor seat is the front of this pipe, front pipe or front square tube. We got good visibility underneath the machine. But probably more importantly, when we get rid of material, we want to have good vertical distance allow that dirt to fall out of the scrapers. So not come coming in contact and dropping on top of your front section, knocking off hydraulic lines. So we got good vertical depth for all that material to come out of the scraper without getting jammed up against the front section. 
Now the backbone of the front section is this heavy schedule front section pipe. It's 5 8 inch wall, 16 inch in diameter, but more importantly the yield strength, 65,000 KSI material, so it has good yield strength, it's a high strength front section pipe. Now when you take basically look at all the forces that are basically exerted in this area, uh, the lifting, the transport of the payload pushing down on it, you have the hydraulics raising the scraper out of the cut, you have a lot of dynamic forces and they call it torsional loads, which means you're seeing forces coming from it from many different directions. Round structures handle torsional loading much better than square tubing front sections. Now you'll see some of the competition out there using square tubing and what you'll find is they'll have to do a bunch of wraps around the top of that front section pipe because they can't get that torsional loading prevented from cracking the corners of that front section pipe. Now if I got this machine full of 22 yards of dirt and I'm transporting at a fair rate of speed, you'll see a lot of shock loads within the hydraulic system. So all that energy is important to limit the amount of stress that comes in this front section. And we do that by putting a 2.11 gallon accumulator right here on the front section pole. And that is teed into the lift circuit automatically. So we allow that high pressure oil to come into this accumulator, dampen off that load, take some of that shock load off the scraper. But probably more importantly, you're not seeing that shock load transferred into the tractor, giving you a rougher ride, but also we're deflecting your rear axle seals. So we're basically giving you protection on the scraper by putting this large accumulator. We're the largest accumulator ride system on the pull type scrapers today. Most of the scrapers you'll see out there, they put a pressure relief, like a $30 pre pressure relief valve, tied in the lift circuit system, system that has a preset PSI to kind of dampen that off and you can adjust that but what happens is there's a feed line that's returning back to the tank drain so you're losing that oil out of the circuit so when you basically have a long haul road say from here hiking dirt a quarter mile or three quarters of a mile or five miles and you've got basically some rough spots on that haul road you're continually losing oil into that tractor cab which means that scraper settles down every time it drops that oil so unfortunately, if you did hit that last hole and you basically your scrapers are getting close to hitting the ground, you impact the ground with a blade, boy, I tell you what, that is a flint stone stop if you've ever seen it. So really pay attention to that because this is an important feature to keep all that hydraulic oil within the circuit so it allows it to relax, settle down, but raise the machine back up. We're not dumping off a tank return. Now the real important characteristics when you're using pull type scrapers and construction applications is to maintain a higher ground speed than the traditional self belt scrapers. You know, after all, these power units, these quad tracks, these high horsepower wheel tractors, and the tire tractions they have basically built into them, they can pull their horsepower and put it to the ground with a ballasting. But what they need basically is to maintain a faster rate of speed than traditional self propelled scrapers having a D8 behind it. Because that's where you really start saving money, basically less equipment, less fuel, but when you Using the scraper, you're going to take a smaller cut. You maybe take two tenths or three tenths of a longer pass, run at a faster rate of speed, and it's important to do that to let that load kind of continue to develop. Because when you get dirt being cut by a blade, you got to keep that dirt in motion and keep it boiling within the bowl. And let me tell you how you do that. Now, ways to control the depth of cut, really, there's two different ways you can do it. You can do that by raising and lowering the rear tires. And that's basically true of Miskins and Reynolds and a number of other rear carriage systems that sit very flat to the ground, raising the rear tires. And that really kind of was a technology used for land leveling. Now, for site work, basically the important thing is we need to basically hog out material. We need to do a quick, fast, and accurate. And basically, so as we're, we're dealing maybe sometimes in undisturbed soil, we need, we don't, we don't know what we're gonna hit. So we utilize a front load design which controls the depth of cut at the front. The difference between the two when you come to a reaction time, the rear tires are a lot slower to respond because you gotta let those tires find good footing, raise the scraper up to get it out of the cut, keep your RPMs up, keep your ground speed up. So you're waiting on those tires to do something to raise the machine. A front load design like us and like John Deere basically raise and lower the front of the blade right of the connection. So we're connected obviously right to the tractor draw bar. The rear tires are fixed to the frame bowl, but basically the front section being lifted, the bowl is being lifted at the front section with these vertically placed cylinders here. Much faster response. When you get into a tough spot where you're losing your RPMs, you're ready to downshift, you can basically pull that out of the cut move that blade up very quickly and keep your RPMs up and keep your ground speed up. It's a lot quicker than a rear load design because a lot of times those rear load designs, you gotta wait for those tires to find good footing, wait for that hydraulics to raise up that scraper. And a lot of times that's basically you're, you're dropping your RPMs down, you're downshifting, 
and that dirt's losing its burning motion. So it's a real key component, keeping your ground speed up, keeping your basically dirt always moving within the bowl. And you can do that much better with a front load design. So let's tell you a bit about what we design in our front load design by utilizing a trending mount cylinder, which is simply a mounting bracket that allows us a cooking on cylinder closer to the end of the barrel, close to the gland. What we're trying to do with that is reduce the moment lever action that the cylinder can place on this front section. Let me explain. The connecting point of the cylinder is basically mounted right at this trunnion band. Well, it's 16 inches from this center of this pipe to that trunnion mount. So it's basically like a short pry bar if you basically hydraulically activate this machine. We're trying to reduce the mechanical leverage that's put through this high stress area. So by having a trunnion mount cylinder, we move that pry bar in. And you'll see a lot of competitors basically have a large ear uh, coming way up above the ear system. So that's like going from a 16 inch pry bar to a 40 inch pry bar. So when you get the hydraulics activating that machine, it basically puts a lot more mechanical strain in this area. So we really keep a lot of that moment action, lever action under control by utilizing a trunnion mount cylinder. So also what you'll find is with this 16 inch diameter front section pipe, we use high strength material. We want to have good depth of frame. So we come up with a 22 inch wrap here. So we got good vertical depth in this transition. Now the cylinder mount, the trunnion mount block basically has a spacer, solid plate for the mounts, the cylinders to have the trunnion mount. We got six and a quarter inches thick. So we got good vertical depth and we got good horizontal depth in this area because six and a quarter inch horizontal, vertical depth of 22 inches. We got good stress and control of this front section of this area. John Deere is a front load design, but they have a cylinder system mounted up here, mounting horizontal, the same direction that you're pulling the machine. And that works up really well for them because they have a framework that supports ability to have that rod end coming down into the main frame there. But what you'll have happen is if you did get a situation where you need the assistance of a dozer to help push, what you're gonna have is a hydraulic cylinder mounted in the same direction as a push. So you're gonna see basically pressure spikes build up on a John Deere scraper if you have a dozer behind it pushing because you're pushing into a cylinder system. So the cheap the thing it is you can blow a hose, you can start looking at cracking grand, glands, bending rods, uh, or else just basically creating a lot of havoc. We're utilizing a trending mount cylinder, the benefit like I just explained, but what you'll see is we're mounting vertically. So if I get at my cylinder in a vertical orientation and I'm pushing horizontal, I don't see the strange pressure increases of a dozer pushing when I'm trying to load So I still have all the free range of motion not to fight against a dozer pushing because I'm raising up and down rather than basically running horizontally and pushing against it. Very key component, and if those guys who have a situation and need to push, we can keep that response down here without seeing the stress and strain of a dozer pushing us and having a cylinder mounted horizontally. Now the next section we're talking about is the bowl, which is the main carrying capacity of the scraper. Now the bowl basically consists of the sidewalls, the rear framework to support the rear tires, the floor system as well. So let's talk about the floor. So starting at the frog, which is the main bolting plate for the blades to be secured onto, we have a T1 one inch thick solid plate frog that basically is supported by double plate uh, floor system. So the, basically the forward leading lower edge of that frog, we have a half inch plate welded to that full width of that frog for the full 10 and a half foot cut uh, from full left to right. And it comes back to the end of the scraper back here. But the upper edge of that frog, basically we take another half inch plate welded to the very forward upper edge of that frog. As they come back, they kind of come together and welded to the point here. And between them, we put some spingers to basically separate those floors, but also give you that cellular design. Now that's very important when you hook into rocks and stumps coming off some slopes with these high horsepower tractors to have the floor system be able to stay straight and true, especially since you're running an ejector over that, because you don't want to have your floor getting pushed up because you're high center on a rock. Very important characteristic, the blades. The blade we utilize a one inch uh, uh, blow, uh, the blades basically we use a cat standard, six inch on center, one inch plow bolt, so you can utilize a lot of the cat blades. And the sidewall basically we utilize a high strength, high uh, 100,000 pound yield strength material as well, but basically you can see it's a little bit higher at the top of the payload. So we basically get up that extra capacity because typically that dirt's developing, you'll find the middle of the scraper kind of be a little higher, uh, allow that material to be captured in it without falling over. But you'll see the very upper edges of this, the, the, the sidewalls have a slight kick out, like a funnel, if you will, to keep material directed in. So it allows the material to kind of fall into the scraper, but also the dirt shields you see on the outside protecting the apron cylinder is tucked underneath that a little bit. So you have, if you do have material coming over, it's shedding away. You don't have a lot of areas for dirt to get hung up on the framework simply because you got a lot of flat spots. We're shedding a lot of that material off the sidewall of the scraper. Let's move to the back. 
Now the side of the bullet basically we have the apron cylinder system and the valve control system on the left hand side. So let's talk about the apron cylinder itself. The apron cylinder is a shutting the apron on extension. So you have all the power of that six inch bore cylinder pushing that apron shut. So we want to have the ability to clamp off or pinch off load. So by having the cylinder extending to shut gives us a max pressure and a max power you could have to shut this apron to capture that loose material and prevent that material from leaking out. On the back left hand side we have the hydraulic control system. It's a mega flow valve system that handles 50 gallons a minute. So what happens is when you put into these tractors with high flow hydraulics we got to have a valve that handles that hydraulic flow coming out of these tractors. So three quarters hydraulic line tubing coming into this valve system. So we don't have any restrictions within the circuit. A lot of the competition you'll see they'll have a smaller valve system that don't have the flow characteristics so what you'll see is you have a higher pressure uh, within the hydraulic circuit so which means that has higher rate of heat buildup you can see more prones for leaks showing up in the cylinder glands and things of that nature so by having a mega flow valve that coming out of these mega flow tractors really kind of handles the flow decently throughout the circuit so in the valve control itself we have a sequencing valve that's right up on top here and a counterbalance valve Basically what you're doing is you're controlling the sequence of events between the apron, so you activate that hydraulic, the apron raises up, then the push-off comes forward. So if you see that, the apron and the push-off are moving at the same time, you make the adjustments to this top sequencing valve to control that. So you want the apron to open up first, have the push-off come forward. Now on retraction, basically you want to have that apron stay up and have the push-off retract, and you make that adjustment through this counterbalance valve. So it's very simple to operate, very simple to set. So basically you can do that adjustments right through here by having two uh, two bolts and remove the it's 9 16 inch bolt here allow it to swing out make all the adjustments within the valve control right here at the valve without taking this 90 pound dirt shield off the back now the rear of the bowl basically we have the four uh, 20.5 by 25 20 ply tires now you can upgrade these to a radial tire if so choose now what you will basically find is on there, there's two levels of thought on how you want your tires configuration a lot of the people who enjoyed the Reynolds tire system they liked the ability for it to compact an area down very uniformly so mounting the tires in line did a better job of compaction kind of keeping that material knocked down but also what you'll find is a lot of the customers with the John Deere's approach of moving the inner tires back a few inches to allow material to flow around the tire so we have better trash flow around the machine. So what we wanted to do is basically give it the best of both worlds and in fact you can basically mount them in line like you can see here or you can move the outside tires forward eight inches so you get a better offset which is more than John Deere has at this particular area. So we can move these tires around and in fact you can actually move the outside tires back and keep the front ones in there so you can basically offset either direction. John Deere basically has the inner tire set back, the outer tire set forward. You can have the ability to move both our tires forward, move them both back, move the tires back. So you got a lot more flexibility basically to do something on here. So when you have them in line, it does a better job of compacting an area down and one kind of a big rolling pin type of effect or moving one tire back so you allow the material to kind of get around one of the tires before the other tire comes in contact with that. We're the only one in the market that's basically doing that. What you'll see here basically is we have a heavy duty framework so we're contacting our rear framework by three areas. We're connecting to the floor, we're connecting to the cross tube and as well as this basically this top pipe. So our whole framework is supported by three contact areas. John Deere, some of the other brands of scrapers are only contacting to the floor and a pipe up here. So we got a lot more structural integrity because we are basically bridging across the width of the machine in three areas and supporting the rear frame with this heavy one inch plate around the back framework. Let's talk about the push offs. Now the last section we're talking about is the push-off. Now the push-off is the whole back ejector wall that moves the dirt out the front of the machine. So what you'll find is basically we responded by having a framework that's very heavily supported because what you'll see is these tractor flow rates of these hydraulics and continuing to increase. So this ejector wall is moving very quickly forward to dump the dirt out the front. So it's very important to have a very wide stance to the framework that supports it heavy tubular frameworks as well as heavy stiffeners that support that stress of so this push off being pushed in the middle and reaching out as wide to that push off panel as possible. We have a very wide stance to the back end but heavily supported with good solid heavy roller systems on the hold down rollers on the side it guides it forward without allowing to drift back and forth seven and a half inch floor rollers or rollers there. We got basically four inch floor rollers running on the push off panel to keep the floor or keep the panel from scrubbing the floor. So it's a very solid push off panel system here that would give you the ability to move that dirt off quickly. So having a framework to be able to support that, having the apron out of the way and having the clearance of that front section pipe allows this material to come out of the scraper without a lot of problem. 
The upper portion of the push-off, we have a 30-inch headache rack that sits forward a little bit. The idea, since it's sitting forward, as dirt is coming across the floor, hitting the back panel of the push-off, comes up, begins this vertical transition. But as it gets to the top, basically this headache rack allows the material to come forward and start that churning and boiling effect. So what we have with this push-off panel is ability to do that with kind of that little kick forward. Now let me tell you why we have an expanded hole on there. It's just not to make it look pretty. It gives you the ability to do a couple things. First of all, when you come time when you want to have hook up a second scraper to this lead scraper, as the operator or the tractor is backing up to that second scraper, as he's looking at it, he can see through the push off and see the guy who's helping him hook up and his hand gestures to kind of allow him to back up properly to hook up that second machine safely. A solid panel hookup panel like this that doesn't allow you the ability to do that and see through that very well. And sometimes some of the competitors have holes on one side just to see through for a little portion of it. We do the whole ejector wall basically with this, uh, these expanded view windows here. So secondly, also when you get into an operation when you're running tandem scrapers, you can actually see through a little bit of this machine to kind of get access to see that machine. And that makes it very especially handy when you come time to open up your apron, say for instance, before you start loading, you can see through the headache rack, look back, see the apron gauge on the basically the rear scraper's apron to make sure that the apron's set properly. So it does a couple different services, but primary, get the dirt to develop and change direction, but makes it more safe as well as operating that second machine, set up that second machine, very easy to operate.